<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to this uh, section in Unit 11 called Changes in Ecosystems. Um, this uh, video is going to address two questions. What happens when new species move into an ecosystem? And how stable are ecosystems? We'll be talking about succession, primary and secondary succession, uh, when we talk about ecosystem stability. So let's look at this idea of dispersal. What does that mean? Well, you all know organisms can disperse. That means that they can move away from their current site or their normal range. Um, obviously, winged animals have a great dispersal ability. Uh, there are also uh, this plant right here. It's a um, milkweed plant. And... Um, the seeds uh, have tufts of fine hair on them that greatly favor dispersal on the wind. So this is an adaptation that favors dispersal. Um, also, there are a lot of aquatic animals that um, have planktonic larvae. Um, here's an example of one of those. This is a barnacle larva. And those planktonic larvae can move with the currents and sometimes travel really great distances through the water. So those are some different adaptations that favor dispersal. So obviously, if the dispersing organisms uh, end up trying to occupy an area where uh, there are competing organisms, they may fail. Uh, but if they encounter an unoccupied habitat and successfully settle there, um, it's the term we use for that would be colonizing. They can colonize a new area. So humans can certainly be agents of dispersal. Uh, recently, um, or in recent history, exotic species have been um, a problem. Exotic species simply refers to um, new species introduced by humans into an area where they did not exist before. Here's some examples of exotic species. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Um, right here, uh, this is a picture in uh, Michigan of a uh, vine called kudzu. It's in the pea family, and it was introduced into the U.S. from Japan in the late 1800s. Um, and it is very invasive. Um, this is a picture of a little um, rodent called a nutria. It was introduced into Louisiana in uh, the 1930s and has become a terrible pest in many swamplands. Here we have also a picture of a fire ant. Um, fire ants are spreading um, north and west into the United States from the southeast and uh, it is an exotic species as well. So it's important to just keep in mind, obviously the introduction of new species into an ecosystem um, can change that ecosystem dramatically. Um, it can cause a shift in um, the resources, a shift in the way the uh, different organisms interact, and it can dramatically impact an ecosystem. So that brings us to our next question, how stable are ecosystems? Um, what about things like fire, storms, climate changes, species invasions? We just talked about those. Um, when the environment changes, the community changes. When any of these kinds of changes happen, um, the ecosystem definitely changes. Uh, and succession, it would be a severe change, the process by which one type of community replaces another. So when change is, um, is uh, severe enough, we have succession happening where a completely different community ends up emerging. And let's look at two different kinds of succession. We have primary succession. And primary succession occurs where no life ever even existed before. An example of that would be a bare rock. No life existed on this bare rock. Um, but we can have moss, lichen begin to grow, begin to form soil then when they die and then the soil develops. We get little grasses, small plants, soil thickens, and maybe smaller shrubs can grow. Eventually, uh, trees would be able to grow. 
pri so pr the important thing to remember, with primary succession, we don't have any life existing yet. Um, so that means no, not even any soil, no uh, prokaryotic organisms in the soil or anything. So then we also have secondary succession, and secondary succession occurs when there has been a disturbance, a site that has been disturbed. There's typically soil already present, but maybe something like a terrible forest fire came through and greatly disturbed the site. Um, we might have cropland that's been abandoned, and um, that disturbance then sets in motion secondary succession. So when we talk about succession, um, it's a long process. The very early stages are usually dominated by plants that disperse easily and grow really quickly um, and have adaptations that favor colonization. Usually very small annual plants, annuals, plants that live for only one year. Usually plants that grow very close to the ground and produce lots and lots of seeds. Over time you can see um, the process of succession taking place. Um, there's also a very distinct process that occurs with lake succession. Um, ponds and lakes definitely go through succession where sediment and organic matter uh, end up accumulating in the bottom. Uh, eventually that pond becomes shallower and shallower until it becomes a wetland area and finally solid ground where then um, different plants and um, other organisms can grow on the top there. Uh, here is an article for you to read as well and answer some questions at the end about uh, Mount St. Helens. And um, you guys probably weren't alive back then. I was a little kid when Mount St. Helens uh, erupted, and it's a story about the succession of that area. So here's just a little chart kind of highlighting some of the things we've already talked about, a few more uh, compare and contrast items here. Read through those. Primary succession versus secondary succession. Here's an assignment for you to do right here. Create a Venn diagram. Compare and contrast primary and secondary succession. How many different things can you think of that are unique and different to each type of succession and what is similar with both of them? So that brings us to our last idea. Um, as we close this section, and that is a climax community. What is that? Well, as succession progresses, we have interactions like predation um, and competition that become more and more complex amongst all of the different organisms in the community. Um, it opens up new niches, increases diversity, um, and eventually that web of interaction may become so uh, intricate and complex that no additional species can fit into the community. An example, that would be called a climax community. An example of this, uh, where that community has reached a completely stable equilibrium. Let's say we're in a forest um, and a very old spruce tree dies and it leaves a space behind that is too shaded by the neighboring spruces for other trees like aspens or uh, another tree that needs bright sunlight to grow well. So only a young spruce can actually grow in that place and thrive and survive because it tolerates shade and it probably takes the place of that old, old spruce that died. And that maintains the biological equilibrium of that community. That would be called a climax community, one that is in um, biological equilibrium. So here are our main points. Remember we talked about dispersal, different adaptations um, for dispersal. We talked about exotic species, primary and secondary succession, a climax community. Here are a few um, items that you need to uh, look at uh, taking care of. These are some kind of assignments, if you will, part of showing your proficiency. Create a Venn diagram. Make sure you do that. Compare and contrast primary and secondary succession. Uh, read the article about Mount St. Helens. Answer the questions that follow. If you want some advanced proficiency, ask some of your own questions. Dig a little deeper. Look into more content on some of these ideas and come and tell me in class. So I look forward to seeing you.